Okay, cool. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome. Daily Dose of RC. Uh, I'm Andy, and we've got Stu with us, and uh, a, a famous a Frenchman, I think. Is that right, Lucas? Frenchman? Yeah, that's right. I'm French. Thanks for having me. Hello, guys. Uh, uh, and given uh, the, the, that we're in sitting in England, uh, uh, Lucas, there's two immediate questions that we have for you. One is, how is the weather where you are? Uh, yes. Everyone, we have to ask that every time. And two, <laughs> how do you become a republic? Um, so the weather today is a uh, gray sky, pretty gloomy. It's it's been almost suitable for RC, but um, <laughs> pretty much yeah, it's been uh, raining here and there, but just to be fine at the moment. And what was the other question? Well, yeah, I was making a joke about the coronation of uh, of King Charlie Charles the uh, Third today, and uh, the fact oh, that wow. you're sitting in a in a glorious democratic republic, and we're <laughs> we're here in a in a feudal system of monarchy but uh, i think that's a i think that's a different podcast isn't it yeah i'm sorry i've not been keeping track on that i i sorry um the, the reason that we uh, invited you on and thank you very much for, for for coming um coming on with us was that i think it was last week you you wrote a i guess what we'd call a blog post a social media blog post uh discussing the uh, the state of, of of RC racing and in particular the 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 modified class and and that post got a huge reaction um, hundreds of comments uh, a lot of engagement a lot of shares um, uh, a lot of reposts and and things and it's a subject that's quite close to uh, to to our hearts and it's very it's very topical for us at the moment so um, we, we we wanted to have a chat with you and find out a bit more about what made you what made you post that uh now and um uh, and and you know why it's uh why it's a concern for you so i guess the the, the, the first question is in your mind lucas um yeah what why should we care about modified racing what's the what's the thing with it actually that's that's actually a good question that i've not really thought about why should we care about modified uh, it's a difficult one to be honest. Um, perhaps it's the elite of the the, the towing car class, and seeing it um, drop in in attendance lately got me a bit concerned. And it's um, yeah, it's, it's it's the class that I like. It's the class that I do. And um, lately, it's been a case of I go to club races and there's barely any heat of modified driving around. Um, this winter, I've, at club races, sometimes I find myself being like three or four drivers in the modified heat. And um, it's been a it's been a while since I, I witnessed the the, the it's coming less and less popular. And uh, that's a, a discussion we we've been having with a few friends of mine. And and yeah, it's a bit of a concern. I, for, I, I think the way that we uh, look at it a little bit on that point is that you've got to have a top class, haven't you? Uh, you, you, you? You've got to have a, uh, an elite class, a, you know, a Formula One, if you like. And the fact that it is really difficult, uh, the fact that it might take people uh, a long time, you know, the proverbial life's work to master, you know, makes these things um you know makes these things worthwhile and um uh that's 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 possibly one one reason why you know why we should care um so could you uh, i mean were you expecting the response that you got how did the uh, how did you feel about what happened when you made that post well i, I did expect kind of a, some reactions for sure i sort of wanted to stir the pot a little bit because that's something i had in mind for a while and um seeing it seeing it like getting worse over time i i wanted to at least hear what people had to say i mean um how to say that it's um it's been a case of um uh, sorry i'm I'm looking for my words just uh not my no native problem. tongue but um yeah I, I wanted to um to hear what people had to say and um And yeah, basically, well, how to say that? 
because I mean, it's 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 the internet, so it's Facebook, and I know people have opinions, and uh, with Facebook, you know, you expect as many as many opinions as there is some uh, as there is comments. So obviously, I I expected a bit of backlash, but it went better than I thought. I I a lot of people reached out afterwards, and um and talked to me online. I I had as many uh, comments on my on my private inbox as in uh, as in the post but um yeah i, I don't know i, I mean do you, do you think that um do you think that outpouring of, of of personal support was was that more in sort of sort of you know gratitude of oh finally someone speaking up or uh or, or was it more about the technicalities of what you're saying well, I mean, to me, it's been a, a topic that I've had with um, with with a lot of people around races. It's been at least four years that we're thinking about them. Um, we're seeing the, the attendance drop, and we were not sure what was going on. It was either a case of um, stock getting more and more popular, and also people saying that modified is perhaps too difficult, and so. We were not sure to 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 um, we were not fully understanding what was going on, and um, we discussed many ideas on how to make it perhaps easier, more attractive, and because the thing we heard all the time is modified is too difficult, uh, it's too much power, um, it's too expensive, and. Yeah, obviously we wanted to uh, think about something to make it more accessible, but at the same time, we were not sure how, how to do it because I hear the comments that it's the elite class, it must be difficult, but at the same time, if no one is doing it, what's the point? And so we were thinking about finding a way to balance everything out, to make it like yeah, for sure more accessible, but at the same time, not too accessible so that the status of being an elite class would remain. And so finding the right balance, it took a lot of discussion and thinking about it and going back and forth with many different ideas. And at the end of the day, I don't I don't claim I have any any answer. Like um I'm I, I might be completely wrong. Like what I propose is maybe not even doable. But at least doing something about it to make sure it remains sort of yeah, attractive because yeah what's the point of having an elite class if only 10 people worldwide are, are racing and i mean i've seen your um the comparison with with moto gp which to me makes a lot of sense because yeah modified class in many ways looks like moto gp it's overpowered we don't have so much grip and it's very hard to drive but at the same time in moto gp they introduced some rules time and time again to reduce the performance. And at the same time, touring car was the same, like the, the, the roots of, of modified, I mean, at least in Europe, it was always restricted for a while. It was 12 turns brushed and then, um, and then brushless arrived. And then it was too fast again because we had to open up to, to no wind limit. So it, it got really, really fast. So we went to five subcells um to make it slower and then lipo arrived and then since then it's been pretty much out of control because we we had no way to limit the power so it's been completely open and for the last what 12 13 years it's been the way it is like um we have tons of power and i think we lost track a bit that yeah modify used to be a bit restricted more than it is now mm, so it's interesting because one of the things in that motor gp example is that that we don't have in rc is the is the safety factor because uh, of course one of the things that happens is as uh, in motor racing or motorcycle racing as they get faster and faster and faster um that the safety factor kicks in where things can be, just become far too dangerous um which which we don't we don't we don't have that do we we don't have that uh, uh self-preservation yeah, uh, uh, boundary, um, uh, boundary on the sport, which I guess is is one of the factors. Um, Stu, you were about to say something. Oh, no, I was just going to say about um, ask about. I mean, I remember the twelve turn days back in the day, but it was a lot slower back then, wasn't it? In, in you know the brush days. Yeah, 
Please. I mean, I'm pretty sure a 12 turns modified like it used to be in like 2005 or something. It's it's slower than 13.5 Blinky right now. Oh, absolutely. Much slower, yes. So the cars, and the cars got a lot off. I mean, stock's fast still nowadays. Yes. But when well, one could argue that these days modified, uh, these days stock is actually modified compared to, to to what the class used to be. Yeah, yeah. But I know when I watch uh, race videos, you know, like EW, EWS or ETS or whatever, I watch the modified class because that's where it's at, isn't it? So yeah. it's, that's, <laughs> sort of is, that's sort of is my point: is that the viewership of modified is almost tenfold more than than stock in in some cases you look at the, the viewership of the videos and, and stock is way uh, modified is way more popular yeah. but at the same time the market is aiming to sell stuff at stock drivers yeah so it's a bit weird in a way that we promote modified to sell stock stuff which which is a bit a bit weird to us modified drivers we wonder what we are exactly promoting like like i know this, the stuff that i use in modified is is no use for a stock driver yeah definitely yeah yeah I well, think I one of the things you mentioned in your post uh, which perhaps you're touching on there was about the any sort of issues with 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 the name with with calling it modified could you elaborate on what you meant by that and the perhaps yeah, changing it's the name to be possible? just one sentence at the end of uh, of the post but yeah it's, it's it's weird to me that we call it stock or modified or because for us in in Europe or Asia, it it, it means nothing. It's it's a it's a term used in North America, and and they know exactly what it means: a stock or modified or an, an outlaw. But to us, it doesn't mean much. And um, I think to to introduce the class to the general public, like they show up to a race and we try to explain, oh, this these are the fastest car, the fastest car. They are called modified. Yeah, but what's modified on them? Ah, no, but it's something you buy off the shelf. It's not modified. It's just the name. And I think it's just confusing to us that um, yeah, it's it, it's it's a matter of being like a grassroots thing from North America that's been translated and 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 imported in in Europe in Asia. And um, to us, it's hard to explain to to newcomers. Yeah, what is what? What is stock? What is modified? What does it mean? As in, um, I remember some race a while ago. It was it was called expert and amateur, the the two classes, and it makes way more sense in my opinion. Yeah, it does make sense. So, how how did you come about? What, what's your background, RC racing background? So I've started in two thousand. I got a, an RC car for Christmas. And I pretty much instantly went racing. Like I think my first race was in March of 2001 or something. So I've been bashing around doing small club races for I don't know two three years. And I, then I attended Tamia Cup in France for a while. And then we figured there were some nationals and regional rounds close to us. And then step by step we started attending. And then I don't know. I think I got second at national championships in 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 what was the stock class by then back then in 2005 and back then by the way stock class was really small it was perhaps 20 or 30 odd drivers per meeting and, and modified was big it was close to 70 guys yeah. fighting for the win in modified <laughs> and then i switched to modified since i switched i switched in 2006 and never looked back since then i've been racing exclusively modified the last i don't know yeah, sixteen years, seventeen years. But I, I think it's the same in the UK. You know, modified used to be. Yeah. You know, well, it was it was the class. It was if you wanted to drive electric, that was the class. And if yeah. you were a beginner, there were a beginner class for you to introduce you to what would later yeah. be the class you were going to drive. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, my questions. Do you do you think um, over that time that you just described, Lucas, those sort of twenty odd? Odd years. What other changes have you have you noticed that might that, that might influence this? Well, obviously, the technology has been changing. Uh, the cars have been getting faster. Um, but what about overall, you know, overall participation? People coming into the sport, people leaving the sport. The 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 size of the sport, if you like, is that is that a factor in your mind? For me, the, the way I I see it, but I. I don't know if a lot of people agree with that, but it looks to me that the, the, the participation overall seems to have been quite stable. I mean, at big races, you expect the same amount of people pretty much the whole time for the last 10, 15 years. 
it's just um, the distribution of people has been changing and 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 because like if, if I take the, the example of ETS, I, I posted a small graph in, in one of the, the comments about the attendance of, um, of modified and how it's been decreasing. But at the same time, looking at the numbers, it's been the same numbers like from the beginning. You expect 200 odd numbers of drivers in, in outdoor and at the big Germany event, you expect a bit more from 300 to 350. But then back then it was three classes. Now it's five or six, I don't, I'm not even sure. And uh, and you can see that the, the, the people like funneling into different classes and some classes striving and some other like, yeah, struggling a bit more. But to me, the attendance seems to have been quite stable. I, I don't know if you guys in, in the UK have witnessed the same thing, but it, it's been pretty much stable. And it, it seems like RC used to be a lot more expensive than what it is now. And that doesn't seem to really affect what people want to do in their free time. They, they, if they like it, they seem to be able to do it no matter what. And that's that's a bit surprising to me. Yeah, I'll get that. Yeah. Yeah. It used to be a lot more expensive. Like it did. the days, the, the, the brushed motors and, and, and the subcell batteries were oh. really, really expensive. And then even worse, back then you had a massive advantage being a factory drivers because you can essentially get the stuff that no one else could have. As of these days, the stuff we use is available to anybody. Hey, and that perhaps in itself is, is almost an argument in saying that the elite class is dropping because if you can buy the stuff the pro use, then the gap you have to the pros is the real gap instead of having the excuse of saying they have better stuff than me. So the gap is impossible to bridge. And therefore you, you would put more effort into improving until you get sponsored and then then step by step you would get closer like these days from day one you you fight in the same environment as the as the best drivers but so would, as would a you, mindset it's harder would you say that as in a modified motor because i think brushless stock motors i think i think it's going a similar way to what the brushed went you know you build a motor you diff, different different brush, you know, skin the con and all this sort yes. of stuff but do you There's think of that the, the thing is the the stuff the stock drivers have is pretty much off the shelf, but in 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 some cases it, it's selected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the stuff they have, if you're lucky, you can end up with the same order as a um, as a front runner, as sponsored drivers in stock. It's it's perfectly possible. Yeah, yeah. But I I mean I do notice I mean especially a stock LMP I notice it quite a lot like yeah. the of the elite the top the cars they sound different you know they're, they're a lot <laughs> you know say a couple of heats down and stuff like that so i think it is like you say if you get a good motor you've got to keep it you? So, but, but yeah. I, I, still, I still believe that there's like a black art in motor building for brushless as such because you've got all these motor checkers and stuff like that nowadays and you like you know we never used to have all that really back in the day back in the brush day oh there's just do you mean do you mean Stu in terms of like checking the sensor board yeah, yeah. and yeah. timing and all of those sorts of things thoughts on the brushes motors but but I, me I remember when brush came out it was just oh you just bolt it in and go but nowadays it's just got more and more isn't it it's just oh you can do this to it or you can check this or you can do this to it so it was sold as plug and play but i think it's progression isn't it but, yeah but it's, it's also i think we, we got better at it so we have more knowledge than before and uh, and the, the important things has have shifted like before finishing the heat was probably enough but these days you have to finish and also be fast to be competitive yeah and um and yeah the, the cars are so good now they are all always pretty much good to drive so are the tires especially in 12 scale you, you know exactly what you have to do and we know which which compound what works on on which carpet so what's left then um yeah fill with power and and stuff like that because yeah everything else is pretty much uh, sorted these days but that's the next mm -hmm. technology in 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 speedos because that's obviously progressing you got speedos now with lcd screens on and stuff like that that's coming through at some point yeah, what's next yeah exactly but what's next do you think that it do you think there's like a bit of an art in uh programming speedos for stock mm -hmm. for modified sorry um do you think that plays a big part in modified Yes, it does. But at the same time, it's not that complicated once you 
understand how your stuff works. It's like, um, yeah, because the, the, the naming of the programs and, and so on doesn't make much sense. But once you figure what does what and and you understand this is the top end, this is the bottom, this is the mid range, this is the brakes, and this does this and that. I mean, in modified, you never anyway find um, really the limit of either temperature or, or runtime or stuff like that. So it's all about having the feeling that you want and enough power to yeah, not be overtaken in the straight, basically, and, and and the rest is is pretty much straightforward. For boosted stock, then it's a bit more of a of a black art because then you tend to stuff tends to get to, to run hot, and then um, yeah, there is some more fine tuning. But as far as modified goes, it's 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 quite straightforward. So wh where would you start with all that? I mean, actually, before we do that. <clears throat> were you surprised with any any comments or reaction to your article? Did you discover anything that you hadn't thought before? What 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 did you learn as a result of uh, throwing those thoughts out there? I've I've had an interesting discussion with with someone who, who told me that in his opinion, modified doesn't go faster these days. It's been going the same speed since two thousand twelve. And in his mind, it's stock that kept getting faster, and the gap between stock and modified is getting smaller. And that that was a bit of a surprise to me because I really feel or think that the opposite is happening. Like the gap from stock to modified has never been so hard to bridge because the difference in um, in throttle response and, and torque is so big that that's the main um deterrent for for stock drivers to to uh, to make the step but at the same time there's been some arguing that um you take an old car and fit it with uh, a modern body and it's just as fast as the cars of today i've never verified that uh, this uh, hypothesis but apparently it's uh, it could be a thing well i know that uh, alexander hackberg did a uh did some social media promotion I think it was an anniversary of one of the early X-ray cars, a T1 or something like this, and yeah. and and he had all of the cars over that period of I don't know how many years, fifteen years or something, um, and uh, and did some lap times and and he discovered I think what you're saying yeah. that the that the difference in time over all of those generations of cars was was actually very very small. Yes, but at the same time, I, I I look at my lap times at my home track, and I feel like every year I go faster than the previous year. So um, it's a it's a weird one to me. I I, I hear the argument, and um, but at the same time, I can I can feel that the, the, the cars of these days just feel so much better. I don't know if they are much faster, but at least I feel like they are better at what they do. I mean, they've they've become more refined for very specific things like. Our cars these days are very good on a very clean, very grippy uh, track, and they don't behave quite so good on uh, on a dusty track. <laughs> and, uh, yes, <laughs> as as you've noticed, <laughs> I would never advise a modern car for uh, for bashing around a parking lot because they're just not designed to do it. But at the same time, they they, they these cars I find them so competent on on doing what they are designed for, and um, I I would be very surprised. That in ideal conditions, evening run on new tires, an old car would be as as fast as a mm. as a car of today. You, you mentioned in your one of the things that you mentioned in your post, which I was keen to ask you about, was tires. Uh, and you 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 were making some comments um, about the tires that are mod specific tires actually potentially having a detrimental effect on on things um could you elaborate on on that and explain but that to, me, to a, a newbie like myself that's to me that's the number one argument for me to to, to write this because this has been an, an an ongoing discussion for at least 10 years it's been 10 years then that we are blowing tires on big tracks and it's been a never-ending story so sorry and, just to interrupt there when you say blowing tires you're you're talking about during a during a run the carcass of the tire giving way and the yeah, insert explodes, yeah. coming out of the tire yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's, it, it always ends up in a, in a scary accident i mean i've seen car backflip at 100k 
in the straight. I've seen inserts or or tires coming through the body shell, making a big hole and stuff like that. It, it's always scary, no matter what. And um, it's been ongoing for at least ten years, and um, and it's it's happened it's, it's happened to every tire brand. Like no one is immune to to tire failure. And these days, the only way we found to overcome that problem is one to use a lot of new tires because they don't tend to explode on the first run and some manufacturers the one we use at ets or the one we had in, in gubbio for the world championships seem to have overcome the problem of of tires exploding by making the carcass very stiff the sidewalls are very thick the tires are this very plasticky feel to it and it means that the, the the feeling of driving these tires is is not as good as it used to be. The, you can tell the car is a lot less slip angle. It's it's much more locked in. It's it feels a lot less alive. It's um, they are surprisingly fast because they tend to produce a lot of lap times on the brakes and on throttle. So we've been able to to use more power than before. But in the corners, the car they don't feel as good as before. And not only that, this 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 type of tires they seem to produce very fast lap times when they're, when they're new like the first two or three laps are very very fast and then they drop a lot on some tracks we've seen a drop of six seven eight tenth between the first lap and lap number four so it means that to extract the full potential of these first three or four laps we have to practice on new tires because you have to make the car good and practice the feeling of the car for this part of the run so it means we use a lot of tires and because organizers obviously don't want us to blow tires and sit out some uh, some qualifiers to save tires for a later part of the, of the event they give us a lot of tires for the race like ets it's four qualifiers and you have three sets mm -hmm. so we only have to drive once on used and if you make the mn you get an additional three sets so pretty much the whole event is run on your tires so it makes sense to practice and spend money on uh, on your tires to be competitive and on top of that, as I mentioned, I don't think the tires drive as good as before, but then because it's the only tire available at the moment, the stock drivers inherit these tires. And I think it makes their car worse and also their experience worse. And the CEOs spending so much money on tires, they think it's the norm and they want to do the same. And at the same time, I understand if they complain it's too expensive because, because it is. And so is that the main consequence of that, the expense? or? Tell me more about how that's impacting the the experience in your eyes for for stock drivers and for for drivers further down the field. I mean, for me, it's it's in a way it's easy because my sponsors they give me tires, so mm. it means I have a lot more tires than before to practice. So my life is a lot easier. I have plenty of fresh tires. It's it's insane how many boxes of tires I have at home. But at the same time, it's a big waste. I mean, I'm not proud of um, of throwing in the bin or or even selling tires that are three runs old because they're no good to me. In the past, three runs uh, old tires were perfectly fine to practice. Mm. And um, I think it's a bad habit. It, we, it's a new sort of norm that shouldn't be the norm. And I think there are options to um to get rid of that problem like as i mentioned if except you go just a tiny bit slower this tire exploding wouldn't be a problem and then manufacturers wouldn't have to have make the tires the way they do now and perhaps we could get better tires that would make a lot of people happier and so in my opinion it's it's worth exploring this this path and and see see what it can deliver but so do you think it's a case of putting like a like a using six and a half turns or five and a half turns, you know, putting a limit on the motors that you're using, or or limit it in another way. Do you think? Or... That's the tricky part, and this is where I'm, I'm. I'm probably not technically qualified enough to to really know where to go. But out, out of all the options we we've discussed, there are there are actually many options. You can limit the energy, the the, the fuel tank of the car make the battery smaller. You can um, limit the turns of the motor. You can go blinky, uh, like it's been the case in stock. There's many, many options. And that was pretty much the point of the post is that I wanted to review all these options and 
make actually an educated guess on, on what would be the best instead of just, um, you know, it's always a matter of uh, knowing versus believing. Oh, I believe this, I believe that. At least I try to test many options and come up with um, an answer to the question of what would be the best way to slow down modified. And, and as it, it seems obvious to me that reducing, at least with the stuff we have available on the market, reducing the motor turns would probably be the only viable option at the moment. Yeah, it would make sense. So we're, we're, we run a series called King of Clubs in the UK. And, and this year we're, we're trying to called Club Mod. So it's 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 mod blinky basically. So it's a five ton blinky speedo. So and it seems to be have taken quite well at the moment. So we've had a we've had a practice round, and then the the, the first round is the end of this month. So we'll see how it goes. But we had two heats for. We're hoping that's going to be like a, a gap between because there's no gap between stock and mod. So it's either stock or full blown mod. So there's nothing in. Between. So we're trying to break that gap between stock and mod so you've got something so you just build up to full-blown modified and so we're just going to see how that goes this year so but it's been received it's, 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 it's not really blinky though is it because it's just zero it's only zero on the turbo and the boost you're allowed the softening and the bottom end yeah. the tuning, okay. um yeah, which sense. which makes an enormous difference uh yeah. with the because, with because the that's the problem I, i've tried i've tried blinky with the five turns because i've seen i've seen your idea and uh, i wanted to at least have a, have a go at it and yeah, the, the main problem, if if you um, take it a bit too serious and you wanted to make competitive, there is always a way to get top speed, as we've seen in in, um, in stock Blinky 13.5. You you crank up the timing, you you put a big pinion, everything gets hot, but you go fast. But the problem, if you do that with the modified motor, it gets so powerful in the low range because you have so much end belt timing that the torque is 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 immense. And in my case going blinky my car got harder to drive with the five turns than it was with the 4.5 because you've got all the, um, the softening and you can run a very low end belt timing to get a tame motor low torque at high speed and you have the boost and the turbo increasing the power with rpm and then it makes the the, um, the range the usable range of the motor much broader which it's not the case in stock i think i'm i'm convinced and I think I'm, I'm trying to convince more people about it that Blinky fixed a lot of issues that we had back then when we went Blinky for for stock. But I think we've come, we've came, yeah, we've learned so much since then that, in my view, boosted everything makes more sense these days because mm -hmm. the stuff we have is so competent now, and all the brands have adjusted and and made hardware and firmware a lot better and easier to use. And to me, it's been obvious, like driving a five-turn Blinky versus a 13.5 open timing, I was reaching pretty much the same top speed, around 100, 105. Yeah. Mm. But with the 13.5, I had to do no throttle management. It was wide open everywhere. As with the five turns, I really had to manage the, the bottom power as it was doing a lot of wheel spin. So in a way, I would argue that going boosted is easier to drive than than um than uh, blinky and on top of it the brake of um boosted motor because the gearing is so short you have so much efficiency on the brakes which you don't have with uh with blinky because the pinion is so big and uh, the motor cannot slow down the car as easily as uh, with a small pinion yeah that makes sense and you, you said um or one of the one of the things and i think we're sort of coming to the end of our time but one of the things that you that you mentioned <clears throat> you were uh proposing some trial runs of things uh some 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 test runs maybe a test meeting or two is there uh, any sort of progress on that any way that people you know could get involved in that um uh, anyone that's listening wants to wants to be part of it what should they do so yeah so far and not much has happened and i'm hopeful that we can do something at some point i mean i don't know if you're aware of it but i'm also a race organizer at my club i'm part of a club that organizes races during the, the the winter so if nothing happened we're gonna do something ourselves but at the same point um, modified on carpet is not broken it's still a perfectly viable class because we turn down the motor so much it's easy to drive the tires on carpet they're good and um, it's less of an issue I mean the, the tire issue is much more obvious on uh, on big track asphalt outdoor so I'm still hopeful that we can work at something this summer 
to at least test some ideas and and gather as many people as possible and 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 find out if if any of what I'm proposing makes sense, what 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 sort of issues can we see down the line and and so forth. But so far, uh, not much has happened now. Maybe we can tempt you over to the south of England uh, one sunny weekend uh, for for a chat with some of our guys. What do you think Absolutely of that? Absolutely happy. I'm happy to come and and help if, uh, if that's a possibility. Yeah. No, that'd be good. That would be amazing. Well, look, um, Lucas, thank you very, very much. Um, uh, it's, there's so much to take in now. I'm sure this is this is only the first of these conversations, right? Not the uh, not the end it's of it because me. the uh, the the issue with these things is to ask better questions, right? It's not about uh, uh, there's no correct answer. It's it's about the questions that, exactly. we, yeah. that we ask ourselves and the, and and the questions that we that we hold. Um, we'll put uh, a link, I think, to your uh, original post in the uh, in, in in the youtube videos and hopefully people will share that have another have another read and uh, and take part in the in the conversation but but for now thank you very much for spending the time with us thank you very much for having me um, pleasure is there anywhere you want to thank lucas do you want to thank your sponsors at all or that's the thing isn't it so no, i'm not here to represent anybody i'm not even sure i, I didn't <laughs> even talk to my sponsors about uh, writing a post that might piss them off so i i'm I'm here to, um, yeah, I don't know, spread the word and uh, and, and try to, uh, yeah, promote RC and and that's about it. Oh, that's that's quite refreshing. Thanks, in, in that case, in that case, we should say thank you very much to Frank Smith uh, for, uh, <laughs> for 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 your time on this. It's been uh, it's been brilliant. Thanks, Lucas. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Take care.